Jesus Christ, that's cool. Hello and welcome to another episode and welcome to this, the amazing, wait for it, Energica SA SA9. So I'm very privileged to have this. Uh, I brought it back from Norfolk last night, 136 miles, and I was able to rapid charge it because it has a DC rapid charging. 33 minutes to 100% and it has an onboard three kilowatt charger so about four four and a half hours at home on the granny lead which comes supplied which is in this very nice pannier rack just here got one either side okay let me tell you what it's got an unbelievable amount of power it's absolutely ridiculous if you're a subscriber of ours you will be able to look back and see one of our early videos which was the zero dsr and the performance of that bike was ferocious it was absolutely bonkers and this is even worse it is insanely quick at 70 miles an hour on a private road if you open it up it will throw you off the back no two ways about it so if you do get to ride one be very careful to put that into perspective this is 60 miles an hour on the energica and this is 60 miles an hour on the zero. But the energy can really comes into its own here and will continue to deliver a phenomenal amount of power and acceleration up until a limited speed of 125 miles an hour. In terms of range, uh, I think if you're careful, you may be able to eke 100 miles out of it. If you hoon it, you're going to get 60 miles out of it. I managed 80 miles, so that was with some just regular riding. The weather was particularly bad and I was taking it nice and steady. So, in terms of spec, you've got heated grips and they are a lifeline, especially on cold nights. Yesterday, my ride home was particularly bad and these just made it a little bit more bearable. So that's, that's a nice touch. It's got cruise control just here. So just a quick button press there when you're, uh, when you're riding along and that sets. As soon as you touch the brake, it drops out. You have got a very kind of geeky, which suits me, display. Uh, it shows you all your watt hours per mile. You can toggle that when you're riding. You can also toggle the regen. You can toggle the traction control, which I will tell you is an absolute necessity on this to bike. To show you just how good that is, I'm accelerating here fully on loose gravel and the bike is very well controlled and this is with the traction control turned off. So it really is a must have. A slight negative here is the positioning of the toggle switch too close to the indicators. I seem to find that when I was indicating, I was toggling, and when I was toggling, I was indicating. You've got two USBs down here. I'm currently charging a GoPro here and my mobile phone is plugged in and it's a decent speed as well. The Energica is weighing in at nearly 230 kilos. It's not a light bike. So an absolute necessity is these huge front Brembo brakes. And you'll be pleased to know it will stop on its nose. And if we come around to the rear, we also have another Brembo disc brake. And also we have fully adjustable suspension, which depending on if you're solo or you're riding with a pinion, you can set that up how you please. So all good stuff. As you'd expect, the Energica comes fully loaded with LEDs, tail light and brake light, indicators front and rear. But what really impressed me was the headlight, as well as the Halo DRL, both high and low beams are full LED, which historically have been substandard to halogen or xenon. But that's not the case here. This headlight performed fantastically in some extremely bad riding conditions. All good stuff. The LiPo battery has a usable 11.7 kilowatt hours and a three year 31,000 mile warranty. The drive motor is a permanent magnet, alternating current oil cooled unit. So no heat restrictions here under heavy use. We have a side stand safety switch as expected and a very useful reverse gear function. This is invaluable on a bike of this weight. And if you can go backwards slowly, then why not forwards too? When charging, either on AC or DC rapid, the fuel tank, as such, gives this display, which looks awesome at night. Also, the headlight gives this funky dance, and the instrument cluster shows up-to-date charge information. This can all be switched off and configured in the screen menus, should you prefer. The EVA SA SA9 really isn't my style of bike, so this, along with the noisy chain drive, took some getting used to. But... We seem to be getting along just fine and I was rather enjoying myself. 
And again, just to show you what the acceleration and regen is like, here is some more onboard footage. Okay, here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. That's been letting off now. That's all regen. Still haven't touched the brakes. Still, still nothing. Still nothing. I'm just about to touch the brakes now. That's all regen. That's absolutely fantastic. So just going into this corner, I'm letting off now. You should be able to see the rear brake light flash in, which is a nice safety touch. So I've had a few people, mainly uh, bike riders, um, they've been asking me what it's like compared to an ice bike in the lanes. Um, now I'm following John Chivers here on his Zero DSR, uh, and I can tell you it's excellent. Um, it's really different in terms of power delivery, but uh, easily as much fun. If I had one criticism so far, I'd say it's a little bit top heavy, especially when I compare it to John Zero. Um, it's kind of strange because uh, the really heavy bit, the battery, is almost the same size. Um, so it's, it's a little bit strange. It seems that the weight distribution is different, but you, you can see here that um, as John's able to put it much more into a corner than I am, um, I'm, I'm sort of having to let off. Now, maybe that's just a bit of confidence in the bike that I haven't been riding that long, and John's had that for a couple of years, but uh, when I swap over onto that Zero, I can definitely, definitely feel a difference. It's um, the, the Zero feels just a little bit more controlled than the uh, than the Energy Car. I think this is this is almost like a bike that you can tour with, um, where uh, John he can he can just chuck his around. So, um, but it's, it, that's only a small criticism so far. One thing I'm not getting bored of is this acceleration. Oh, God, it feels absolutely amazing. Never get bored of that. So me and John carried on riding and putting the Energica through its paces, of which it handled very well. It was good to have two opinions, but we both agreed the Zero had better weight distribution and handling, mainly because it's lighter, but even with skinnier tyres, it seemed to hold the corners much better. However, the Energica feels more at home as a tourer, and because of the rapid charging that the Zero doesn't have, myself and John agreed taking these into Europe would be great fun. What I did find throughout my test ride was an overwhelming addiction to the unhinged acceleration. It's simply fantastic, and this alone makes me want to buy the bike. However, let's talk prices. 21k on the road will buy you this bike, which isn't cheap. However, if you head over to English Electric Motorcycles, they have some excellent PCP deals, fantastic service and a wealth of knowledge, and I'm sure these guys would be able to get you out on one for a test. So, thanks for watching and we hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please remember to follow us on Twitter, at Kate Phantom, and we'll see you next week in another episode. Bye for now.